You're listening to TC Talks on TMT. Hey, how's it going, everybody? It is TC here, back with another episode of TC Talks. Don't you love it when you take a drink or some food into work and then some jerk just goes and throws it away for no reason? Well, I had the best drink in the world. And Arnold Palmer. If you guys don't know it, that it is half tea, half lemonade. It is amazing. 99 cents too. And I know, 99 cents. Why are you crying over 99 cents? Well, I'm not a high roller out here, okay? 99 cents to me is like 50 bucks to the average person, okay? So for someone to go and take away my drink, one of the few sources of happiness I had today really just struck a nerve with me. And you could tell because I talked about it for 30 seconds, but that's not not what this episode is about, even though I could talk 10 minutes about how it's rude to throw out somebody's drink, I'm going to go ahead and talk more about how it's rude to have one of the ugliest football matches for your fan base. The Chicago Bears looked absolutely terrible in week three. It was a complete cluster mess, and I wish I could say the other words. I really do, but... I'm trying to keep it family friendly, trying to make it so you guys could be like, oh yeah, my son's in the car, don't worry about it, you know, he's not going to swear, he's a good guy. So we're out here, we're trying to give you the good work, we're trying to do the good stuff, keep it on the up and up, the straight and narrow, I don't know what the saying is, you guys let me know what the saying is down below, but those bears... Wow. Wow, 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 wow. Matt Eberflus, you are not the answer. I am sorry. So there are many things wrong with Chicago. Justin Fields, the offense in in general and defense, I mean everything. But Matt Eberflus has shown that he is not the answer in any regard for the Chicago Bears. He looks terrible as a head coach. The team doesn't look good. Justin Fields looks worse with him than he did under Matt Nagy. And then you have the same old problem with the Chicago Bears non-stop penalties. His hits principle was supposed to come in and fix that kind of silly mistakes, build up the team morale, and keep them uh, all nice and tidy on the field. That has not happened. And sure, it's only three weeks. You know, what what are we talking about in three weeks? How much can he change a team in three weeks or one off season? Come on, let's give him some slack. Okay, sure. But why is it that on offense, nothing looks right? Nothing looks good at all. The offense looks completely horrible. That offensive line that him and him and Poles tried to work so hard on during this draft process in the offseason looks completely awful. That defense that was half the picks that the Bears used this year still looks awful. Those two major acquisitions, uh, Kyler Gordon, not looking too good, to be honest, got picked on against Green Bay and, again, did not look solid this past week. But, I mean, going up against a lesser opponent had a better opportunity to succeed than he did against Green Bay, and, and he did do better this week than against Green Bay. But still, the defense didn't look good. The offense fails to look good. And specifically with the offense, the play calling is just not there. Now, I know Matt Eberflus has an offensive coordinator. I know that Matt Eberflus isn't the one out there calling the plays. But at the same time, Why isn't he saying anything? Why isn't he doing anything to change what's going on? This Bears offense looks the complete same as any other Bears offense. The Bears never look any different when they change head coaches. The first year, Matt Nagy, I will give him the credit. He did show a little bit of a different life for the Chicago Bears. But then two seasons later, it's right back to the same exact stuff. It's the same, you know, we're going to run a lot. We might throw the ball. If we do throw the ball, it's going to be an incomplete pass or an interception or like a a backwards negative two-yard play and maybe a breakout throw where our wide receiver picks up 30 yards after the catch. And that's why we have a a net 70 yards this this game, maybe. But I, I don't understand how it resorts back to this, how the offense regresses into the same exact offense year in and year out. I mean, I guess I do because the quarterback situation is the same exact thing year in and year out, same head coach, different offensive coordinators. You know, it, it, it doesn't matter. 
any combination of, of different, new, same, old, whatever, doesn't matter. It doesn't work for Chicago. And all of a sudden, it's we're going to run the ball 65% of the time. 30% of the time, we're going to try to pass it. And 5% of the time, we're just going to give the ball straight to the defense without a fight. That's what it is in Chicago. It is so embarrassing to watch. And then you see Justin Fields, the Lord and Savior of Chicago football, coming in and throwing two interceptions alongside eight completions. What are we talking about at this point? I seriously don't know what I'm talking about. I'd rather go on a rant about who took my Arnold Palmer and threw it in the trash because I'm ready to thumb wrestle over it or something like that. It is that's not cool, bro. Okay, you know what else wasn't cool? The fact that the defense gave up as little as they did and it was still a game. That's pretty good, All right? Especially with that Bears defense that, you know, got ran all over. I mean, the, the Texans just didn't want to run the ball. That's all that happened. They just didn't run the ball in Chicago. If they would have kept running, they would have won the game. But no, they decided to pass. They decided to rely on Davis Mills. And you know what? You reap what you sow, Texans. That's the only reason why Chicago got that win is because you decided to trust a bad quarterback's arm. We at least decided to trust Justin Fields' legs to get to the left hash mark. We barely got there. He knocked himself down somehow on the way, but he did it. He did it. How he needed to fall to the ground, I don't know. But, I mean, it's just, it's situations like that. How do you need to get hit on that play, Justin? How do you need to get hit? How do you need to draw contact on that play? All that needed to happen was Justin Fields needed to go to the left hash mark, take a knee, wait for the timeout. That's all that needed to happen. But instead, what did he do? He goes and he runs, and he runs into a freaking defender to get knocked over. Why? It is pointless. It is an unnecessary contact that he is taking for no reason, and it happens on every play. There will be a completely dead play. Six defenders around Justin Fields, and he thinks he's Spider-Man taking on all six defenders at once, only to get popped three times. Why? Just go out of bounds, Justin. Do not take the hit. Take the yard that you were going to pick up anyway, and just go out of bounds with it. Okay, there's no need for you to pick up a yard and a half and get hit. None whatsoever. You're not going to make four guys miss. It's not going to happen. Accept the loss. Move on. Go get that next play. You're going to give yourself CTE two years into the league. It's ridiculous. I'm not saying this is someone who wants Justin Fields to fail. I'm saying this is someone who doesn't want to see Justin Fields go through something horrendous. This is a guy who doesn't want to see Justin Fields not be able to play because of an Andrew Luck-like situation where his offensive line and his play on top of that adds to him getting injured way too often, way too young. That's what I'm talking about. In the play style that he is utilizing, he is making his NFL career shorter by the year every game. It is ridiculous. He needs to calm down. This is not backyard football where guys are just trying to wrap you up and, you know, make sure you don't score and, you know, all that. These are guys that pop. I mean, I just remember watching. I don't remember what game it was last night, but I was watching and I, I just was like, wow, the way, the way that these guys are flying off the ball to the guy with the ball, you know, it is like this, I, this football looks dangerous. It looks even more dangerous than it did when I was playing it. And like, yeah, sure. I mean, I was like 12 when I played football, but still like, you know, when you're young, everything seems like it's more extreme. And, and you know, today this football, I'm looking at it as a grown man. It's like, what the... Come on, how how is this legal? This should, this sport should be banned, and that's what Justin Fields wants to run into. For what reason? I have no idea, no idea. Honestly, I want I want to say more. I want to say something other than Justin Fields. Please don't get popped sixteen times next week. But honestly, is there anything else to say? Get Justin Fields out of the pocket. Work in the RPO. Work in play action, especially when you have Khalil Herbert getting over 150 yards on the ground, okay? Work in some other things. Get Justin moving. Get Justin throwing the ball. I'd rather him throw six interceptions against the Giants next week than him throw six passes total, okay? I don't want to see that. I don't want to see under 20 passes. 
I don't want to see under 21 plays called that were passing plays. Because let's be fair, yeah, only 17 passing attempts. That's probably because Justin Fields held onto the ball for eight seconds and then just ran with it, looking for a prayer. Okay, let's be realistic. There's probably a number of times that happened. It's not worth it to go back and find out. I know, like, you know, trust me, if this was any other team that the information was vital, I would go look it up. But since it's the Chicago Bears and Justin Fields, it's not worth it. Why would it be worth it when they're sucking this bad? It's not. Bottom line is the defense doing pretty good with what they've been given. The offense looking even worse than we were expecting. Justin Fields look regressing underneath a new system. We thought Matt Nagy was the low point for Justin Fields. We didn't even know. And it wasn't even Matt Nagy's fault, it seems like. seems like it was just Justin Fields' fault on his own because he's really doing that bad. It, it's, it's abysmal. Then you got Matt Eberflus himself. Not doing a good job. The offense, the hits, principles, all of it looks bad. Six penalties, despicable play, just overall poor performance. Zero effort, it seems like, on the field. I mean, Justin Fields, he literally no whistle, and he's just, like, looking to give up on an arm tackle as a sack. And it's like, okay, well, then, yeah. I mean, you you touch him, he's, he's sacked, okay? New thing for Justin Fields, so that way he doesn't have to get hit. I don't know. I don't, I don't want to say anything else. I don't want to keep ranting about how bad Justin Fields is because, honestly, there is hope for him. I think he can develop into something, but, again... It's not going to be in Chicago, and it either needs to be Matt Eberflus or Justin Fields hitting the door at the end of this season. Do you guys agree? I want to know your thoughts down in the comment section below. If you love the video, go ahead and show me that love down below, and we will return all that love with videos just like this one, an unexpected Bears review of Week Three. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Stay tuned for our Week 3 review coming up tomorrow night and our Thursday video as well. And really quickly before I go, I just wanted to let you guys know this is going to be the last episode of TC Talks 1.2. So that means that we're there. You know, there's no me, right? You haven't seen my face. You've seen nothing but a, a weird glitching screen. And I didn't realize how bad of a glitch that was. So I apologize to all of you, and I thank those of you who have stood by and have dealt with that glitchy screen, but fear not any further. It is just going to be there for a quick second, and then we are going to be transitioning back to this beautiful smiling mug for all you great people. So TC Talks 2.0 Season 2 is going to be starting next video. Until next time, this has been TC with TC Talks. Peace. Peace.